I'm about to reveal something that might shock you. If I had high blood pressure, there are 10 specific things I would do starting today that could drop my pressure 20, 30, even 40 points, and most doctors will never mention them. I'm Dr. Claire Whitmore, and after two decades as a cardiac surgeon, I've watched patients struggle with uncontrolled blood pressure despite multiple medications. And I've also seen patients implement these exact strategies and transform their cardiovascular health in ways that shocked even their own doctors. These aren't complicated procedures or expensive treatments. I'm talking about strategies you can start today, right after watching this video, that address the root causes most doctors overlook. What I'm about to share goes against some conventional medical advice. Some of these strategies your doctor might not even know about, but the research is published, the evidence is overwhelming. And if my blood pressure was elevated, I wouldn't hesitate. I would do every single one of these things immediately. By the end of this video, you'll understand exactly which 10 strategies are most powerful, why they work, and most importantly, how to implement them starting today. This isn't fear-mongering. This is life-saving truth. Stay with me, because what you're about to learn could literally add years to your life. Let's start with the foundation that everything else builds on. If I had high blood pressure, the very first thing I would do is check my pressure at the exact same time every single day and track it like my life depended on it. This sounds basic, maybe even obvious, but here's what nobody tells you. Most people check their blood pressure completely wrong, and wrong data leads to wrong decisions. Let me tell you about Thomas, a 68-year-old patient who came to see me after his cardiologist told him he needed a fourth blood pressure medication. Thomas was already on three drugs at maximum doses. His pressure was still 165 over 95. He was experiencing crushing fatigue, dizziness when he stood up, and erectile dysfunction that was destroying his marriage. The thought of adding another medication felt like surrendering to a life he didn't want. I asked Thomas how he was monitoring his blood pressure at home. He told me he checked it whenever he remembered, sometimes morning, sometimes evening, sometimes when he felt stressed. His readings were all over the place, and he had no idea what was really happening. That's the problem. Blood pressure varies dramatically throughout the day. It's lowest when you first wake up. It climbs through the morning. It peaks mid-afternoon. It falls in the evening. If you check at different times, you're not measuring the same thing. You can't see patterns. You can't tell if anything you're doing is working. I had Thomas buy a validated home monitor. Check his pressure every single morning at 7 a.m. Before medications, before eating, before doing anything else. Sit quietly for five minutes first. Take three readings one minute apart. Average the last two. Write them down. After one week, he had seven data points showing his true baseline. After one month, 30 data points. After three months, he could see trends. The data gave him proof, motivation, power. The second thing I would do if I had high blood pressure is cut my sodium intake to 1,500 milligrams per day maximum, and I would be absolutely ruthless about it. Not 2,300 milligrams, the standard recommendation. Not 3,000 to 4,000 milligrams, what most Americans consume. 1,500 milligrams. This is the level where blood pressure reduction is maximized according to research published in the New England Journal of Medicine. But here's the brutal truth. You cannot achieve 1,500 milligrams by just not adding salt at the table. That salt shaker contributes maybe 10% of your sodium intake. The other 90% is already in the food before it reaches your plate. Bread, cheese, processed meats, canned soups, restaurant meals. Even foods that don't taste salty are sodium bombs. One turkey sandwich from a deli? 1,250 milligrams. You have 250 milligrams left for the entire rest of the day. If I had high blood pressure, I would stop eating any food that comes in a package or from a restaurant. Everything. No exceptions. Every meal would be whole foods I cook myself. Meat I season with herbs. Vegetables without sauce. Eggs. Fruits. That's it. This is the single most powerful dietary intervention for blood pressure. Studies show it can lower systolic pressure by 8 to 14 points. That's equivalent to adding a blood pressure medication. 
but almost nobody does it because it requires completely changing how you shop and eat. Thomas was eating lunch out every day, frozen dinners when tired, crackers and cheese for snacks. His sodium intake was probably 4,000 milligrams daily. We cut it to 1,500. His blood pressure dropped 12 points in the first month from this change alone. The third thing I would do if I had high blood pressure is start taking magnesium glycinate, 400 milligrams per day, and never skip a dose. 75% of people over 60 don't get enough magnesium. Magnesium relaxes blood vessel walls. It's a natural calcium channel blocker. But here's the critical detail. The form matters more than the dose. Magnesium oxide, what's in most cheap supplements, is worthless. You absorb about 4%. Magnesium glycinate is the form that works. You absorb 80%. I would take 200 milligrams with breakfast and 200 milligrams before bed. Give it 12 weeks to replenish cellular stores. Expect blood pressure to drop 5 to 10 points, maybe more if severely deficient. Thomas added magnesium glycinate. Eight weeks later, his pressure dropped another 8 points. Simple, safe, effective. The fourth thing I would do if I had high blood pressure is practice slow breathing exercises for 10 minutes every single morning without exception. Research published in Hypertension demonstrated that slow breathing can reduce blood pressure by 10 to 15 points. But here's why most people fail. They try it once or twice, don't see immediate results, and quit. If I had elevated pressure, I would commit to 10 minutes every morning for 90 days before judging whether it works. The protocol is specific. Sit comfortably, close your eyes. Breathe in slowly through your nose for four seconds. Hold for four seconds. Exhale slowly through your mouth for eight seconds. The extended exhale activates your parasympathetic nervous system and lowers blood pressure. Repeat for 10 minutes. This isn't meditation. This is a physiological intervention that directly reduces sympathetic nervous system activity. It lowers cortisol. It lowers adrenaline. It causes blood vessels to dilate. And if you do it consistently, the effects compound. Thomas added this to his morning routine. 10 minutes before getting out of bed. Within four weeks, his morning readings were six points lower. Free. No equipment. No side effects. The fifth thing I would do if I had high blood pressure is eliminate every bottle of vegetable oil from my house and replace them with olive oil and real butter. Canola oil. Soybean oil. Corn oil. These oils are loaded with omega-6 fatty acids. Research in the American Journal of Clinical Nutrition showed that replacing vegetable oils with olive oil reduced systolic blood pressure by five points. Thomas made this switch immediately. His inflammation markers dropped. His blood pressure followed. Before we continue with the next five strategies, I want to make a quick request. If what you've heard so far seems valuable, I'm asking for two simple things. First, subscribe to this channel. My mission is to provide clear, straight-shooting health information so you can make the best decisions. Second, and perhaps more important, share this video. Think about your parents, your grandparents, your friends who struggle with blood pressure. A simple click can start a conversation that could genuinely save a life. Thank you for your support. Let's continue. The sixth thing I would do if I had high blood pressure is walk for 30 minutes within one hour after every single meal. Not just once a day. After breakfast. After lunch. After dinner. Blood pressure spikes after meals, especially after eating carbohydrates. This post-meal spike damages blood vessels three times a day, every single day. But if you walk immediately after eating, your muscles pull glucose out of your bloodstream. Your blood vessels dilate. The spike is blunted or eliminated. Studies show that three 10-minute walks spread throughout the day are more effective than one 30-minute walk. If I had hypertension, I'd do even better. 30 minutes after each meal. That's 90 minutes of walking daily, timed exactly when my body needs it most. Thomas implemented this religiously. Morning walk after breakfast. Walk at lunch. Evening walk after dinner. His post-meal pressure spikes disappeared. His 24-hour blood pressure profile transformed. The seventh thing I would do if I had high blood pressure is stop drinking alcohol completely for 90 days and objectively measure what happens. This is uncomfortable for many people to hear because there's a belief that moderate alcohol is heart healthy. 
Here's what the research shows. Alcohol raises blood pressure, even moderate amounts. Studies published in Hypertension found that people who stop drinking see their blood pressure drop by 5 to 10 points systolic. If my pressure was elevated, I would eliminate alcohol entirely for 90 days. Not reduce it. Not limit it to one glass. Zero alcohol. Check blood pressure daily and watch what happens to the data. Thomas was having two glasses of wine most evenings. We eliminated it completely. His evening blood pressure readings, which had been running 10 to 15 points higher than morning readings, normalized within three weeks. The data was undeniable. The eighth thing I would do if I had high blood pressure is get my vitamin D level tested and then get it above 50 nanograms per milliliter and keep it there. Low vitamin D is strongly associated with hypertension. Vitamin D regulates the renin-angiotensin system, which controls blood pressure. It improves endothelial function. It reduces arterial stiffness. If I had elevated pressure, I would check my level immediately. If it was below 50, which it probably would be because most people over 60 are deficient, I would supplement aggressively. Most people need 4,000 to 5,000 IU of vitamin D3 daily to reach optimal levels. I would check my level every three months until optimized, then twice yearly to maintain it. Thomas's vitamin D level was 22, severely deficient. We started 5,000 IU daily. Three months later, his level was 52. His blood pressure dropped another four points. The ninth thing I would do if I had high blood pressure is eat potassium-rich foods at every single meal without exception. Potassium counters sodium. It helps your kidneys excrete excess sodium. It relaxes blood vessel walls. The recommended intake is 4,700 milligrams per day, but most people consume less than half that. If my pressure was elevated, I would deliberately include high potassium foods at every meal. Avocado, spinach, sweet potatoes, white beans, salmon, tomatoes, one medium avocado, 700 milligrams, one sweet potato, 500 milligrams, one cup cooked spinach, 800 milligrams. If you're intentional, hitting 4,700 milligrams is achievable. Critical safety point. You cannot take high-dose potassium supplements without medical supervision because too much potassium is dangerous, especially if you have kidney problems or take certain medications. Get your potassium from food. It's safe. It's effective. Thomas added potassium-rich foods to every meal. Spinach omelet for breakfast. Sweet potato with lunch. Avocado with dinner. His pressure dropped another five points over six weeks. The tenth thing I would do if I had high blood pressure is eliminate all added sugars and all refined carbohydrates from my diet immediately. Sugar and refined carbs spike blood glucose. High blood glucose damages blood vessel walls. It promotes inflammation. It activates your sympathetic nervous system. It raises blood pressure through multiple pathways. If my pressure was elevated, I would cut out all added sugar completely. No sugar in coffee, no desserts, no candy, no sweetened beverages. I would also eliminate refined carbohydrates, white bread, white rice, pasta, crackers, most cereals. These spike blood sugar just like pure sugar, causing the same vascular damage. I would eat only whole, unprocessed foods, meat, fish, eggs, vegetables, nuts, real food. Research shows that reducing sugar and refined carbs can lower blood pressure by eight to 12 points. It also improves insulin sensitivity, which further helps pressure control. Thomas eliminated all sugar and refined carbs, no exceptions. His pressure dropped another seven points over three months. Now let me show you what happened when Thomas implemented all 10 of these strategies consistently over six months. Starting point, blood pressure 165 over 95 on three maximum dose medications. Experiencing crushing fatigue, dizziness, erectile dysfunction, his cardiologist wanted to add a fourth medication. One month. Blood pressure 152 over 88. Down 13 points systolic. Three months. Blood pressure 132 over 78. Down 33 points systolic. We eliminated hydrochlorothiazide completely and cut lisinopril in half. Side effects improved dramatically. Six months. Blood pressure 128 over 76. 
down 37 points systolic. He was on amlodipine 5 mg, one medication at half his original dose. Fatigue, gone. Dizziness, gone. Erectile function returned. He felt like himself again. But what Thomas told me during that six-month visit mattered more than the numbers. Dr. Whitmore, I spent five years watching my medication list grow longer. Five years feeling like I was slowly disappearing. The fatigue, the brain fog, feeling old at 68. I thought that was just my life now, but it wasn't. It was the medications. Now I have energy all day. I sleep better. My mind is sharp. I feel 10 years younger. That's what these 10 strategies can do. They don't just change numbers on a monitor. They give you your life back. Today, we've uncovered 10 powerful strategies most doctors never discuss. Daily monitoring, aggressive sodium restriction, magnesium supplementation, breathing exercises, eliminating inflammatory oils, post-meal walking, alcohol elimination, vitamin D optimization, high potassium intake, sugar and refined carb elimination. My main message isn't panic. It's not stop taking your medications. Doing that on your own would be extremely dangerous. My message is empowerment. Now you have valuable information most people never receive. You know that blood pressure responds powerfully to specific lifestyle interventions. You know you have far more control than you thought. Use this knowledge to become an active partner in your own health. The next time you see your doctor, go prepared. Bring your daily blood pressure log showing the downward trend. Ask clear questions. Doctor, my pressure has been consistently lower. Can we discuss reducing my medication dose? Most physicians will be supportive when confronted with objective data. Every treatment is a balance between benefits and risks, and that balance changes as your blood pressure improves. Medications that were necessary at 165 over 95 might not be necessary at 132 over 78. Your heart has worked hard for decades. It deserves exquisite care. Protecting it is the best investment you can make in your future. Don't take any intervention for granted, no matter how common it seems. And now I'm asking one last thing from you. Share your experience in the comments. Did something here surprise you? Which strategy are you going to implement first? Your stories can help others. And remember, always talk to your doctor. That conversation is the most important step you can take today to protect your heart for tomorrow. Take care of yourself.